After its formation, Bandmade consisted of five members, and the only guitarist was Konami. At this time, Bandmade wasn't really a hard rock band, but it was something that all the members wanted to move towards. It was then decided that the addition of another guitar would help them achieve this vision. So, they had two options recruiting a guitarist or having a remaining member learn to play a new instrument. They knew they didn't want another member, so it was up to Saiki or Miku to fill this role. As expected, Saiki refused, so Miku took responsibility as the founder of the band to learn to play guitar. At the beginning, Miku's guitar was little more than an ornament to make the pigeon look cool rather than an instrument to play on stage. Miku had a lot to learn and not much time to practice, so she used to play some notes here and there without having a real impact on the song. There are even some songs where she didn't even hold her guitar. Miku's first guitar was a Rickenbacker 620 that she used for practice and for concerts. She chose this guitar for its looks, as she didn't have any other knowledge of guitars back then. Miku never thought about playing guitar. Like Misa, never thought about playing bass, but contrary to Misa, who fell in love with her instrument, Miku didn't like playing guitar that much. As she practiced, her fingers hurt, and she was asked to play more and more increasing this pain and the blisters. Not a great start for our pigeon and her guitar. As the years have passed by, bandmade songs have been getting more and more intense. Miku now had enough experience as a guitarist to notice that she needed a new guitar to match with this new kind of music. Fortunately, she joined Konami, who was invited to visit the Zomitis factory by Kanda Shokai from Kanda Shokai Corporation, the company that owns Greco guitars, and Zomitis guitars. During this visit, Miku fell in love with the Zomitis A24MF for its looks and its heavy sound, so she asked if she could try this model. Since then, she's never stopped using Zomitis guitars. Song after song, Miku was getting more guitar parts to play. And when she began to feel under pressure, the other members cared enough about Miku to tell her that it was okay to put it down if she wasn't sure that she wanted to continue playing guitar. And even though she did think about quitting the guitar, Miku didn't want to bring an additional member to bandmate, so she just kept practicing to match the level required by these new songs. We know how much of a hard worker Miku is, so there was no way that she was going to give up. Also, with more songs with different tunings and more concerts to perform, Miku needed more guitars, so she added other Zemitis guitars to her collection, like the Zemitis CS24MF, Aces and Eights. Miku added a lot of guitars over the years, electric and acoustic, and almost all of them are from Zemitis. And a special model was teased by Miku in early 2021 and confirmed a month later. A signature model named Flappy Pigeon. <laughs> Zemitis 
Zemaitis talked to Miku about making a custom guitar for her as a surprise present. She didn't believe them at first, thinking it was a joke. At first, only the metal front design was planned to be customized, but Miku asked if she could also change the shape of the metal and that this model fits her current settings. As Miku seemed to know what she wanted to do with her signature model, Zemaitis let her make any modifications she wanted to. She worked with a designer called Koji Takauchi, who helped her create this beautiful design. Miku even used her handwriting for the logo at the center of the guitar. As expected, a lot of pigeons are visible everywhere on this design. Miku said that she chose this name with the thought of being able to fly around the world with her guitar. The Zemitis Flappy Pigeon was sold on March 9, 2021 with a beautiful case and a certificate of authenticity signed by Kubato Miku herself. About a month later, on April 16th, a Miku Kabato special exhibition was announced. The event took place in Ochanomizu Gaki Center from April 16th to May 5th and featured almost all Miku's guitars. Fans were able to check Miku's guitar collection and even buy a guitar or a Zemaitis t-shirt. T. Shinji had the chance to visit this exhibition and shared some of his photos of the trip. ありがとうございました。もう一人別のスペシャルゲストによるスペシャルコーナーの時間です。あ、we uh, <coughs> actually have two guests. うわ、ゲストが二人も。Yeah, <laughs> we have two incredible guitarists with us today. それではスペシャルゲストの二人と小鳩さんのギタリストとしての進化についてお話ししましょう。こんにちは。お二人とも自己紹介していただけますか? Hey, this is Axe from the Axe Japan YouTube channel uh, from Sunny Scotland. Uh, I've been playing guitar for about 26 years now. 26年も? すごいですね! I'm a songwriter, a performer, and a teacher of, of guitar. The bandmade song that got me hooked on them was probably YOLO. さん、こんばんは。DPG です。今回ですね、海外のバンドメイドファンコミュニティの方から声をかけていただきまして、え、コバトミクのギターについて語ってほしいというふうに言われまして、まあ、あんまりこういうのやったことないんで、ちょっと
、ニューベギニングか、あまあ、スリルとかフリーザー収録されてるやつですね。まあ、あの辺がリリースされて、えー、翌年には、えー、ブランドニューメイド、えー、フリーダムとかアローンとか入ってるアルバムですね。Also, the way that these songs were written、uh, back in the early days,、uh, her purpose, guitar wise, was really just to back up、uh, Konami. Uh, and a lot of the parts, guitar parts, especially in the first,、uh, first few releases, were just single guitars, really. They really could have got away with just having the one guitar player、uh, in the early days. But I think because Miku is a songwriter and she was learning guitar, then why not have her just do backup for you know, the main parts of the songs? Obviously, she's singing as well, and you know, you can tell if you go back and watch like early performances and stuff, there are quite a few mistakes、uh, on her part. But yeah, you can chalk that up to many things lack of experience. You know, obviously, singing and playing is, is not easy, it's not the easiest thing in the world.、Uh, it takes a lot of skill to do that. So, there are mistakes here and there. If you follow the band closely over the years,、uh, she has got so much better、uh, playing guitar. Uh, and also singing and playing guitar. And also, the confidence has grown a lot. Especially the confidence, it really shows.、Um, she's a lot more comfortable playing now and just letting loose. You can tell that she's not putting as much thought into it as she was before because it's all become second nature now to her. In this stage, I've been a guitar for about three years. I think it's a good thing to do with the guitar. I think it's a good thing to do with the guitar. っていうともうほぼ初心者と変わらない状態ですよね。まあその状態でまあ作詞やってたりとかプロモーションもやったりとか、うん、まあ編曲だったりとかアレンジですねとかやってる中でまああまり練習の時間が取れないって考えるとまあ通常のまあ一般の方がギターをやる3年とはまあちょっと違うのかなっていうふうに感じるんですけど、まああのその当初はまだ弾いてるフレーズをまあ簡単というか、えー、パワーコードだったりとか。まあ、あのほどほどテクニカルなことはやっていないなという印象ですけども、まあ、あのバンドされる方は、まあ、分かってらっしゃると思うんですけど、まあ、そういったサウンドがあって初めてバンドに厚みが出るので、えー、必要必要というところでいうと、まあ、十分必要なポジションではあるのかなと思います。Obviously, she has a, a great mentor in the band Konami. It would be amazing to have someone like that in the band to actually teach you. Uh, but her progress、um, has just come through, through practice. And when you're in a touring band, that's all you're doing. You know, you're playing the same stuff every night, and that's what practice is it's just repetition. So, you know, being on the road、uh, all the time, she's playing constantly. So, yeah, she's bound to improve, and that's exactly what's happened. I think also her improvement on guitar has led to the evolution of the band.、Uh, it's actually A very important thing that's happened、um, during their career. I think Konami was a bit limited in terms of writing in the early days because she was basically only writing one guitar part. And then, in 2017, it was just a very good album. I was very good at the 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 album. えー、ですよねで結構 BPM が速くなってきてて、えー、その中でもスライドだったり、まあ、オクターブ奏法だったりとかっていうのがあるので、まあ、正直、えーまあ、ギター歴5年でここまで弾けるっていうのは相当すごいなというふうに個人的には思います。で、えー、ここから劇的に変わるんですけども2019年の「カン」からのリリースから「チョーキング」とかの単音フレーズとかも。まあ、バンバン入ってきていて、えー、でも楽曲としてもかなりアクセントになってる部分があるんですよね。まあ、あまり感からあの聞かれない方はちょっとぜひコアとパートに耳を傾けていただけたらなと思うんですけど、結構あの難しいことやってます。あのこの歴で考えると相当ハードル高いことをやってるなと思います。で、えー、2021年ぐらいのまあギター歴8年かで。まあ、アンシンワールドですよね、えー、結構直近ですけどもアンシンワールドリリースしてで、まあ、正直あの、まあ、自分も耳コピーしたりとかしてカバーするんですけど、まあ、アフターライフの B メロのバッキングとかすごいどぎも抜かれましたねあのあむずいって普通に思いましたあ
but now that Miku is a lot more comfortable and has gained a lot of proficiency on guitar, uh, she's able to write parts with two guitar parts in mind. And especially in the last couple of releases uh, from Bandmade, there's a lot more songs that have separate guitar parts, like guitars one and two, where they'll do different things. And sometimes they'll even harmonize with each other. There's even some little lead things that Miku does now. That's just a, a really nice evolution to see going from just playing chords back up all the time to actually playing uh, some lead guitar, uh, which, is, which is really, really cool to see. Uh, just to give you a quick example, uh, if you take her solo from the onset instrumental, uh, which is basically this. <laughs> Just chords, uh, we're in drop D, so you can basically bar, it's like one of the easiest things to do. Uh, to her solo in Cyan Akadori, where she's actually playing actual octaves in more of a solo environment, I guess. She's actually doing stuff like that. That's just night and day from, you know, from a solo, like just a chord solo to actually doing octaves. And I wouldn't be surprised in the next couple of albums that you will see her actually doing like some, some cool, like little lead stuff, uh, actual, maybe even some guitar dueling with Konami. It would be really awesome to see. And speaking as a guitar teacher myself, I can only imagine how proud Konami is of Miku and how far she's come. Uh, and you can see it when, uh, when they're playing together live, whenever, whenever Miku is doing a part that's more complicated than what she's used to. Um, and you can see the look of, you know, she's doing it on her face, which is, uh, yeah, it's super nice to see.彼女がまあ で、ま、so yeah, like I said, I think uh, Bandmade's musical evolution actually has quite a lot to do with Miku's improvement on guitar and uh, like, you know, we can only just uh, look forward to seeing what comes next. You know, we might start seeing even more sort of complicated guitar arrangements uh, involving two guitars. So yeah, we just have that to look forward to and yeah, we'll just continue being proud of uh, the progress that she's made. コバトニクのギターをどうだとかっていうのをあまりこう真剣に考えたことがなかったんですけど、ま、今回こういう機会をもらったので、ま、いい機会になったなと思います。ま、あのこれからも私はま、バンドメイドを応援していきたいなと思
and we can expect that she will have a bigger role to play in the future. Even though Miku is writing most of the lyrics for Bandmade today, it was not the case during the first years of the band's activity. It is very common for the debut of a band under a label that the management hires one or more lyricists to provide the songs for the band to perform. That was the case for Bandmade, who worked with Akutsu Kentaro to write the lyrics of their first single and their first mini-album called Made in Japan. He even helped with the music and arrangement of Smile, which was released in 2019, a few years after their last collaboration. After Made in Japan, Bandmade worked with other lyricists for the next two mini-albums, New Beginning and Brand New Made. And it was with Brand New Made that Miku finally got to show her writing skills, as she was able to debut her first lyrics for Alone with the help of Psyche. Oh. She also did the lyrics for Yuragu and Freedom. Now you might wonder, why Miku's lyrics? How was this decided? Especially considering that before joining Bandmade, Kanami worked as a singer-songwriter, so she had the experience of writing lyrics. Nevertheless, Kanami, Miku, and Saiki decided to try to write lyrics for a few songs. Saiki said that she wanted to write lyrics but couldn't come up with the right words. And Konami's lyrics were a bit too airy-fairy to match Bandmade's current style, so they decided that Miku's lyrics fit the best. And Miku has her ways to get the inspiration she needs. Most of the time, when a song is done, she listens and takes notes about what's going through her mind. Then, she looks for ways to actually see what she has in her head, like watching movies, reading books, or searching materials on the internet. As long as writing lyrics doesn't become a duty, but something she can do whenever she wants, Miku enjoys going through this process over and over to write new songs. Let's take, for example, Influencer that was released last year. Miku asked Saiki and Akane for a theme that could match with the song Konami wrote and as Miku has been on TikTok for quite a while, Psyche suggested to talk about women living on social media. The trend of influencers on social media grew a lot with the pandemic, so it was a great suggestion. Miku read a lot of interviews and analyzed the behavior of those influencers that inspired her for the lyrics, like having two accounts on Instagram, 
one secret where you post your daily life photos and talk to your friends, and a fake account where you post only good-looking pictures to attract more followers. Miku also likes to employ words with multiple meanings, or even puns, as she did an influencer with the Japanese English pun for the lyrics chit chat, which means meaningless conversation in English, and chit cha, which means narrow minded in Japanese. <laughs> Psyche is singing it closer to the Japanese word to make the pun even harder to find for the Japanese audience. For songs tied to an existing media like openings or endings, Miku is very involved with the material that will be linked to the song. Last year, she released a song called With You for her side project, Klupo. This song is the end title for the anime Smile of the Ars Notoria. And to write the lyrics, Miku read the novels and played the game from the same license to be in sync with the storyline. That's what I call true commitment. Some songs are even written while bandmates touring, like Spirit or Carry On Living, which was born in a cafe in Berlin. Or more recently, Memorable, which was written during the US tour, along with the filming of a music video shot in California. I feel my heart There is also one song that was written especially for the fans, as a gift from Bandmate, and planned for the Nippon Budokan concert that was cancelled due to COVID. It made a lot of us maniacs cry with its powerful lyrics that gave us hope when we were all having a hard time during the pandemic. And this song was about us. Now the very astute of you might have noticed that Miku has a special persona during interviews or when she's on stage. And not only when she's dressed with her maid costume, this habit is so imbued in her head that this verbal tick is present in her private life too. もういいですけど。諦めた。その衣装着てない時とか普通にこう終わりますこういう収録とか終わって帰りますってなった時にちょっとコンビニ寄ろうとかで寄ると <laughs> but she wasn't always like this. During the first years of Bandmate, she didn't have this funny pigeon persona and talked more normally, but always with a great energy. <laughs> あらためまして、バンドメイドと申します。え、私たちバンドメイドは先ほど紹介していただきましたように、メイドの服を着てバンドをやってる。そのまんまですね。なのでバンド
バンドのメイドバンドメイドと言いますあのちなみにロゴは R がついてるので R 忘れないようにしてください<笑>はい私たちバンドメイドはですねえ皆様のことをあなたもあなたもあなたもあなたもご主人様お嬢様として呼んでおります Once you get used to Miku talking now listening to her not saying Po feels very weird even though not everyone likes this side of her Under Bandmaid's previous manager, she tried to bring her persona but was quickly discouraged to continue. でもマネージャー変わった時に、はい、今がチャンスだと思って、はい、ちょっと言ってたら意外とそっちがこう返してくれたのでもっとやってこっぽと思ってあ自由に言えるっぽと思って<笑> So you may ask why Po? いい質問ですね私も気になります小鳩さん説明していただけませんか小鳩ミクと先ほど自己紹介しましたがっぽ<笑>小鳩ミクの小鳩は小さい鳩にミクなので、うん、私小さい鳩なんですっぽここは皆さん飲み込んでくださいすっとすっと,、ね、と飲み込んでくださいちょっと苦いもの飲み込むみたいな気持ちで飲み込んでいただいて、うんはい、なので鳩なのでぽーって語尾についたりくるぽーって泣いたりしますっぽー、うん、解決っぽー解決きっと<笑>受け入れてくれるはずなので受け入れていただかないと多分耳障りが大変なことになりますっぽなるほど説明ありがとうございましたナレーターさん続けてください Thank you Miku is actually using what is called in Japanese Kiara Gobi a common technique used in anime to make fictional characters more memorable and distinctive like the use of the onomatopoeia Nya By cat like characters at the end of their phrases. Except that Miku is a pigeon. So she uses the word po. It's been years since she became the small pigeon that we know today, always full of energy and happiness with her cute and funny persona. And when she is on stage during MCs, Miku becomes the funniest comedian for a few minutes of pure joy. でも小鳩さんの MC はいつも面白くて大好きです。もっと見れますか All right, but just a little bit. We have a lot of work for the next part. え、次の動画は何から始まるんですか、uh, Let me check. Oh, おまじないタイム。おまじないタイム大好き。楽しみ。残りは来週にしましょう。
次回は必ず最後まで見ますでは皆さん良い一日を日曜日にお会いしましょう「手を守れたくなること